work from Macy's. What? Liquid out of nowhere. Break the face. All oh, this is going in the favor of Team Liquid. Oh, goes down. It is taking the fight oh, on Liquid's this. just killing everyone oh, on the battlefield. Way comes in. If he comes alive. Liquid, make it through. Data analysis in esports, just the same way that it's important in traditional sports or in poker or in chess. Anytime that you can get an edge or a positive EV, you want to take every chance you can to use it to the best of your ability. So within esports, wherever you can find patterns or statistics that increase your chance to win, you don't want it to completely run how you do things or eliminate the human aspect because that also can have a negative impact, but you want to give it its due diligence and you want to um, make sure you know what the analytics say about each specific game or each specific strategy or uh, anything within a game. There's really just so much that goes into it and the possibilities are endless in everything that we look at and that helps us to grow and improve. More specifically within PUBG, the data analysis that we like to focus on is things like fourth circle strengths because they're the most impactful determinating factor towards where a game will end. And so we put a lot of time into knowing what those parts of the map are and how a specific fourth circle will shrink and how we can use it to our advantage to plan for end games. We use that to kind of dictate how we want to play. And even if it doesn't quite end where we think it's going to, it at least gives us a common goal to play towards, something that um, all the players believe in and all the players want to make a play that they feel is the right play instead of having like hesitation or anything. We also look at teams' rotation paths, mainly just teams that loot near us for specific circles based on plane pass, knowing when they're gonna be able to reach a specific compound or area of the map so that we know if we need to do like a more thorough scouting of the area or if we can kind of just know that we're gonna be beating them there or if they do happen to beat us there, they're not gonna have the correct loot or you know helmet vest, that sort of thing. Also, there's certain rotations that can be quicker or safer than others that we put a lot of time into looking at how can we utilize this rotation path? Is it the safest? Is it the fastest? Can the Murado use it or can only the pickup truck? So things like that are big analytical things that we have to do out of game that we have to look into before an actual match so that we know and that we're comfortable using it during the matches. You still want to do the due diligence during the game of playing as a team, which is always going to be more important, but it's good to kind of have a basics and understanding of what to expect during each game and each zone. So today we're going to be breaking down two games, what we do in post-game and how we look at games. The first game will be from PCS5. This is a game where we did a really good job in the pregame of scouting a, a compound and seeing a, con a consolidation from another team. On this circle pop, we are now starting to prepare for the next zone, which will eliminate water. Getting prepared for this, I'm gonna use a tool here that Twire provides for a force shrink, which is going to try and eliminate as much water as possible. We're really just looking at these two primary compounds. And what we're gonna see here is we're gonna move to this secondary compound as we're being crashed by another team. So the reason behind this in game was we had the knowledge that there was what we believe to be max two players of this team here, Galacticos. Um, now in hindsight, after the game, we learned that it was definitely four players. And moving forward to the next zone, as we see it shrink, this is similar to a zone that we were expecting to be playing out of. And we value this compound and the ability to play through this much higher than the compound that we were previously at. So we wanted to take a chance and we can see um, where the future shrinks go and how teams were able to play through um, this area of the map. We thought this would be an easier fight for us and uh, lead to a better game. As it plays out, we lose people on kind of crash on the impact. We were still able to get a couple good knocks. It was a winnable fight, so uh, we don't wanna like ever take the easy way out of saying that we made a bad decision or anything like that. We think that most decisions we make, we're still able to play our ways out of them if we're playing good. This was a game that didn't go well for us, but we would probably make the same decision again based on the information we had. 
Uh, the next game I'll head into is the upper bracket of the PSL Finland challenge. And this is a game that, spoiler alert, we end up winning. Now this is a very interesting first circle and there's only so many specific endings to play for. There's only really like four or five endings here that happen frequently. And so we're playing for one of those. As soon as the second circle pops, we know that there's basically three endings possible. By this being circle two, we already know that there's only a few endings left and that circle three will dictate exactly within you know a couple hundred kilometers of where the game will end. So as I speed through this a little bit more, you can see our team going from a high ground position of scouting to kind of solidifying a spot that we really want to play for an end game. And as the next circle hits, we know that we're going to get the zone, that we're going to be in the area where the game ends. We're able to take this whole time from when circle three shows to when circle four pops to pre-game, pre-plan, um, what happens if a team tries to crash this area or this area. So as this next circle pops, it's exactly what we expect. Um, and we know that we're in a good position to win this game as long as we can fend off from crashes. From the very beginning of the game to the end, we're in complete control. Um, the zones are pretty favorable and we're putting ourselves in a position to get those favorable zones as well. It's no secret that luck plays a factor in games. It's not as much as most people like to think. There's a large sample size of games you play and the more games you play, the more you see teams that can put together high level strategies and execute them as a team and communicate effectively and properly. Those teams tend to finish at the top. There's a reason that the same teams are winning the same events over and over. There's a reason that Virtus Pro is playing so well. There's a reason that Team Liquid is known to be in the top three almost every tournament. So as much as there is some weight to luck playing in the games. If it was due to complete luck, there would be a random team winning each event and that's just not the case. Each team is gonna have a game that is gifted or that they should win. And the good teams are the teams who can win those games and make the best out of games where they shouldn't win or they shouldn't have a, a good performance and they still manage to wipe two teams before going out. With data analysis and with how fast and rapidly changing esports is, we're always looking for the best products or the best software, whatever gives us the capability to compete at the highest level. So we wouldn't be able to do any of that without Alienware. They give us top-notch PCs, top-notch platforms to use to take our game to the next level. Because we have the best hardware, we have the best technology, the best software, we're able to break down games at a, a quicker pace. We're able to see what other teams are doing throughout all regions. Instead of having to spend hours and hours doing trial and error within the game, we can use these tools and platforms to do it for us, uh, to give us the sure answer instead of just based on feeling, and that's invaluable. Because of these tools and these platforms, the software, the hardware, you're gonna see us implementing things that we didn't have knowledge to prior. We're going to be a new team, we're gonna be a team that is really feared and a team that performs at the highest level possible during PGC 2021. If you're interested in improving your personal performance or diving into the world of competitive PUBG even more, be sure to follow Team Liquid on Instagram and be on the lookout for the stories that we're gonna bring you throughout PGC 2021.